Bulgaria have developed some world-class footballers, but their domestic clubs have never really had much to shout about. So today, because of you lot, I'm giving Bulgaria a £1.6 billion TV deal to try and help them win their first European trophy. Every club in the top division gets £100 million per season over the next 100 years to buy new players and improve their facilities. So when will we see a Bulgarian club start to win a European competition? Well, it's going to be a slow start. The Bulgarian league is only 25th in reputation rankings, with players wanting to move to places like Cyprus and Scotland more than Bulgaria. The league does have four European spots, although they're all for early qualifying rounds. Bulgaria's league worked a little bit like the Scottish leagues, but on steroids. At the end of the regular season, the top six go into a championship group. The bottom six go into a relegation group and the middle four go into a state of purgatory where they play a few games against each other and then the team on top takes on the highest ranked team from a championship group that hasn't got European football yet for that final European place. Have you got all of that? Good. Me neither. We're interested in the championship group, where Ludogrets have just got on to win their 12th title in a row. It also means they were in the Champions League this season, but they lost in the qualifying round to Karabag. This dropped them into the Europa League, where they went on to qualify from their group, but just lost to RB Salzburg in the knockout playoff round. So not bad for Ludogrets in this first season, but they were the only team to get past the qualifying rounds in Europe, so there's a long way to go. Hopefully these clubs use their money since to find out if they have, we're jumping through to season 10, where every club's received one billion pounds. Levski Sofia have used their money to improve their facilities to attract and improve better players, which has seen them win three of the last 10 titles. But based on the league's highest earners, Lokomotiv Plovdiv have not spent well. They're giving this terrible striker 98,000 pounds per week. His agent is laughing all the way to the bank. And my doctor is laughing about how much Lemsip he's selling me at the moment. I'm sorry for my voice today. I know it's not great, but we've got to do what we've got to do. Just want to make some videos for you guys, especially ones that you request. So um, if you've not subscribed already, feel free to do so. Would love that. Thank you very much. The good news is the league has now risen to the 10th most popular in Europe and now get one team directly into the Champions League group stage. This suggests there have been some really good performances in Europe. And in the Europa Conference League, we came so close. Arda Kudzali came runners-up in 2030, losing to Servette. Levski Sofia and Ludogrets have reached the Europa League round of 16 on a few occasions. But it's Levski Sofia who went a step further in Season 10, reaching the Champions League knockout round for the first time. I mean, they did lose, but it's still pretty impressive. So hopefully this is a good sign as we head in towards season 25. However, the league has only risen two places in popularity and there's been no changes to the amount of European places they get. This is a little bit worrying. There are no Bulgarian winners of the Conference League, but there are two new losing finalists. Botev Vraka and Bero Zagora. I am fully aware that I've said those team names completely wrong, probably. There have been improvements for other teams in other competitions. For example, CSKA Sofia did reach the semi-finals of the Europa League back in 2035. And Levski Sofia reached the round of 16 in the Champions League in 2043. But they are the best that any team has done in those competitions. So hopefully by season 50, we'll see some teams get past that. Okay, maybe Bulgaria are making moves. The league is now only behind the traditional top five in popularity. And they now get two teams directly into the Champions League group stage. They're also so close to overtaking Germany to take a third group stage spot as well. It looks like Spartak Varna are the top team in Bulgaria at the moment. As well as having 880 million in the bank, they've also got a new 50,000 seater stadium and near perfect facilities. But it's not the biggest stadium in Bulgaria, as Levski Sofia play in an 86,000 seater behemoth. I can confirm that Levski Sofia have won a European trophy, but they weren't the first. In 2048, CSKA 1948, who were founded in 2016 apparently, there must be more to that story than meets the eye, became the first Bulgarian side to win a European competition by lifting the Conference League, which opened the floodgates. Four years later in 2052, Levski Sofia lifted the trophy by beating Celtic. 
And just two years later, Ludogrets had their turn to become the champions. In 2057, Septembri Sofia beat Atalanta in the final before Levski Sofia won their second Conference League nine years after the first. And CSK 1948 won it again in 2067. And in this current season, season 50, Arda Kazali, the team who made the first final back in 2030, finally won it. There have been a few losing finalists in there, but for the most part, Bulgaria are winning. There's also been one winner of the Europa League as well, and that was in 2066, when Spartak Varna beat Tottenham 3-0 in the final to claim the trophy. They're also the only Bulgarian finalists in the Europa League, so it's a good job they won it. However, it is not all good news, as we haven't seen a single finalist in the Champions League, and in fact, we haven't seen any team since Leipzig Sofia get past the round of 16. So there is still a lot of work to do. However, by season 75, Bulgaria's top division has actually dropped behind Portugal in popularity and has lost a bunch of European qualification places. I don't quite understand why they've dropped backwards though. Yes, there's only been one new winner of the conference leave, Botev Raka back in 2081, but there have been a bunch of finalists in recent seasons, and this year it's an all Bulgarian final. It's a similar story in the Europa League with Ludogrets winning it in 2088, and we have seen finalists as well, although not so many in recent seasons. So it must be to do with the Champions League because there hasn't been a single Bulgarian club to get out of the group stage since 2061. That was 36 seasons ago now. That could be due to Bulgarian sides paying rubbish players hyper-inflated wages. Anyone who's less than 150 current ability out of 200 shouldn't be earning anywhere near £200,000 a week. Even the league's top earner, who does have very good current ability, doesn't really have very good technical abilities. So as we head to season 100, uh, I'm a bit worried really. The good news is the league is back up to sixth place in popularity. It's just a shame we couldn't break into the top five. They've also got back a bunch of Champions League places, which is good. And there's now four teams with stadiums that have over 60,000 seats, which again indicates success. And success is what we've had. In the Conference League, there have been three new winners in the last 25 seasons. There have also been three winners in the Europa League, which has to be a good omen for the Champions League. Well, in 2117, Barrow came eighth in the Champions League league phase. This put them in the round of 16, where they went on to beat Napoli 2-1. They then beat Tottenham by the same scoreline in the quarterfinals, but Manchester United were just too strong in the semi-finals. And that is the best any Bulgarian side has ever done in the Champions League in the past 100 seasons. 160 billion we've given Bulgaria and all they've got out of that is one semi-final of a Champions League. There has been a positive side effect though. All the money we've given Bulgaria means they've invested heavily into their youth facilities, which has resulted in the Bulgarian national team winning the 2108 European Championships. Bulgarian clubs aren't the only teams that need saving though. I recently tried to rebuild Liverpool to win them the treble, but it didn't always go quite to plan. So if you want to see how that one turned out, the video is on screen right now. 